Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight, uh, calling the meeting to order. Uh, tonight is May 15th, 2023. My name is Sue Smith, and I'm chairman of the planning board. Quick set of introductions uh, to my far right, John Shaheen, board member, of course, I'm the board member, Sarah Judas, our secretary, again, Sue. Carl Farenkrug, board member, Deb Cook, board member, and Roy Smith, board member. And Bargavis uh, is another board member who is not in attendance tonight. Um, our town engineer, John Buckles, and the town attorney, Jamie Sutton. Many thanks to Veronica for electronics and Zoom. Deep press. Yeah, I would say. Um, Yes, we're a little uh, crowded tonight, but I do thank you for taking the time to, to come out to these meetings in Palm Beach, which are important. Um, both of the items on the agenda tonight are public hearings that are scheduled. If you wish to speak at either one, we do ask, there's two sign-up sheets over by the American flag that you sign up um, when the time is right, then we'll orderly um, have the opportunity to speak. And other than that, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in the physical liberty and justice of all right, the record show Smith is including some for notes. Um, for those that are standing, um, we do have some more chairs, but they're under lock and key right now. As soon as DR is here to unlock them, the, we're hoping to get a few more chairs in here. So be patient, we appreciate that. Um, first order of um, business, business for us actually is our minutes from that meeting, which were sent out to ourselves as a draft form. I had some corrections that I forwarded in, and I know John has sent some in. Were there any other corrections from our board members? With those corrections. I make a motion that we accept the minutes with corrections from Sue and John. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion so carries. Uh, first of all, on the agenda, Smith's. Quality Eggs LLC. It's a public hearing on a site plan review for project located at 2393 Berlin Road. A tax map on the parcel is 021.02-11.1. Uh, Arlen or representatives? Arlen. <laughs> Um, patient with electronics too. Um, I thought this was for the other one, no? Oh, it's both. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, while she's calling up the map, um, I wanted to just give a brief overview because there's a lot of people here that weren't here last time. Yeah. Uh, so right now the Smiths are proposing a 12, about a 12,000 square foot dry storage building. Um, it's going to be about 9,000 square feet dry storage with the remaining 3,500 or so square feet for retail. Um, primary purpose is for them to be able to sell their eggs and then other prepackaged food items. And, and feed items. And feed, yeah. 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 Um, site can be located right on Kelly Road, and it's going to be just west of their existing facility where they sell the products out. Excuse me, just, just one second. Just, yeah. So we're clear, the applicant should always be addressing the board, not the, the public. So you're addressing us. Just speak loud. You know, I'll you're, speak a little louder so that you're just yeah. basically talking to us. Got it. Yeah. Um, do you want me to? 
We're waiting on this, I guess. Um, I did. Yeah, I, I grew up on a chicken farm, so I, I get this, um, especially with the avian flu. If anybody has gone into Smith's early and bought their eggs, you're actually walking into the packing room and with different diseases that are highly transmissible, that it's best to move the sales out of the packing area. You don't go anywhere near the chickens at all and anywhere like that. So, They've told us that that was the first move of they want a separate building that they can have the store in and keep the people away from manufacturer processing aspect of it. And also through COVID that they've realized and have the new technology um, to them of the mix mill where they can mix up uh, various feeds for, okay, your own backyard chickens or maybe pigs or you know, other livestock and so on. And they're looking for a, a place to sell that and have a storefront, um, also straw and, and things like that. So that's been their main impetus for this building. And it would be basically on the same footprint as their home farm, just across the driveway from where they've been walking in and uh, purchasing the eggs now. So that's been their main impetus with that. So we've looked at the, the building, we've looked at the parking, we've looked at the access, we've looked at um, lighting, uh, signage. Do you have letter or BR's approval for because this is on a town? Yep. Oh. Was sent to county for comment. We do have the county comments back. And but uh, where is, uh, in a nutshell, um, has the septic been approved yet? It's best. April 4th. Have a copy of it. Um, because the county's only comment back on this was Onondaga County Health Department. Bureau of Public Health Engineering must formally accept or approve, respectively, any existing or proposed septic system to service this property prior to or as a condition of municipal approval of the site plan. So pretty much in their, their presentation to the board, that their questions were answered and information was, was given appropriately. Um, board members have any questions for we go on with the next section? Um, Ed, is there any of those plans that are actually visible that you want to talk about or um or if I don't know what else we want to look at. Do you have any other I don't really think there's anything issue wise that needs to be discussed. Yeah. And you've got the big plans here. Okay, John or Amy, do you have any So oh, um, with that and the information that we've been presented with and reviewed that they submitted in from the county, um, we'll do the seeker before we open the, the public hearing. Uh, seeker is a series of 11 questions. Um, seeker is an uh, acronym for a short environmental assessment form. Series of 11 questions, and they can be answered um, one two ways, one or the other. Uh, one answer would be a no or a small impact may occur. 
And the other answer would be a moderate to large impact may occur. And after we go through these questions, the board answers themselves um, on these. And at the end, it will help us in our determination of the seeker. So number one, will a proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use planning or zoning regulations? Uh, this is in a uh, agricultural farm zone. It's been farmed for years and years. Um, they've been already operating a, an egg sales there, and I feeling is a no or small impact. Mm -hmm. Number two, will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity and in use of the land? Again, based on presentations, I believe that's a no or small impact. Mm -hmm. Number three, will a proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Uh, that's, uh, yeah, so that's a no or small impact. Proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area. Um, we have nothing to, to lead to believe of that, so no. Number five, will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? Uh, no, or small impact. Agreed. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No, or small impact. Number seven, will a proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies and be public or private wastewater treatment utilities? No, I'm small on both of those. Number eight, will a proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No, small impact. Number nine, will a proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, such as wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, and fauna? No, we're no. small impact. Will a proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No, we're no. small impact. And number 11, will a proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No, we're small impact. Uh, based on the answers all being no or small impact, I make a motion for negative declaration for seeker. I'll second the motion. Second by Kevin. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Okay, so with that, or he has any other questions whatsoever, um, I will make a motion that we open the public hearing on Smith's Quality Eggs, LLC. I'll second the motion. Second by Kevin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, it's a piece of paper soon. Yeah. So, oh, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> Yes, this has been advertised and public notices were sent out um, for local law. Um, okay, so rules of decorum. <laughs> okay, uh, when I call your name, um, come to the front of the room. Um, you are speaking to the board. We will take your comments and questions. It's not necessarily the time that we speak. Directly back to you. Um, Civil, again, speak up, name and address. Um, no more than a, a three minute um, presentation would be appreciated. It probably fits some of those chairs up here in the front. Also, we have room up here. 
I'm just going to wait a quick minute once we get set up. So, and Helen Bailey, you're going to be first up. Right. <laughs> 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 I'll play church. Plenty of good seats up front. Yeah, good seats up front here. <laughs> Well, okay. Uh, Helen Bailey. <laughs> um, my name's Helen Bailey. I live at 2671 Ridge Road. Um, I think it's great that they're finally doing something in another building. Um, how big was the building? It was approximately, did you say $9,000? 12,000. Yep. 12,636 square feet. Okay. Um, it's staying agricultural. It's not going to be a retail or a commercial or. Again, um, one building in one end of it is a store that you would walk in to buy the eggs. Mm -hmm. Or on the front side would be overhead doors that you would pick if you're buying grain. straw or grain that you would be picking them up in the front. Okay, so just the end of the clock building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. So that's um, permitted use and okay. also what they're selling is what they grow and produce themselves. Okay. 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 Oh, my heart now. I just wanted to say, I think it's great they're going to have a store. We go in and get the eggs, and we won't be scaring the poor chickens or bringing in diseases to the chickens, and they're saving the chickens. And I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Alma, what's your street address? 2703 Ridge Road. I'm sorry. Thank you. I am going to miss watching those eggs come off the conveyor belt there. <laughs> you'll, you'll still be able to see it. We'll have a television in there. That's oh, that's broadcasting that. That's smart. That. <laughs> Did anybody else wish to speak on the Smith project for the site plan? Uh, I thought they were all here. <laughs> <laughs> if you would just go over what your intended hours for the store. So everybody knows. Yeah, so it was 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Monday through Monday through Friday and like 7 to 3 on Saturday. <clears throat> Closed Four from the Indies. Yeah. Similar to what we do now. Yeah. Yeah. Going once, going twice. Anybody else for public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Public hearing is now closed. Based on all our info 
and the comments. Any further discussion from the board? Uh, to just clarify, the health department is just that uh, they have to approve the septic system before. They got, they got, it, they got that approved. Yeah. 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 Safety Corps 2023 septic system to service this property because there would be uh, one bathroom with this septic has been approved. Okay. Motion. Need the map of the map number. Yeah, the map. And then. This is the most correct. The. Are you shaking your head? Uh, I make a motion that we approve the Smith Quality Eggs LLC um, building proposed uh, on tax map number 021 dot dash zero two dash one one dot one based on plans um Edward Reed Engineering the LLC dated March 30th 2023 and the drawing would be the identification it's a series of oh, okay okay Based on, um, and their project number is 202319. That's my motion. I'll second it. Motion by Kevin, second by John. Any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> it carries. By plan proof. Well, you can take your seat now. Hey, you already got one. <laughs> Sorry, seat up front. Uh, yeah. Okay. Which set next? The second I submitted as a few hand recommendations that address the specific topic. Newer than this. So. Well, yeah, but you're still going to have a handwritten part. The, the, the site plans are complete. It's just additional comments based on some things. I'd like to do the easel again if we could. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, what's not on the screen is these comments, but. Um, but you can see anyway, so you have to leave. That's here. I'll just leave it out for me to read. Okay. All right. So, um, No, I we're gonna it's up on the screen. It's gonna be better. He said he has some handwritten changes. I won't be able to read them anyway. Okay. Yeah. I just I just need you all to look at him to speak to him. That's all. And it's out here. So I don't think that's everybody's gonna do that. Okay. All right. It was on the roll. Oh, there it is. 
Thanks. Let me know when you want me to start. Veronica, can we come down to the site plan? Next page, I think. On our agenda is Eladino Farm, also known Heritage Hill, public Sorry. hearing. Right there. Site plan review for project located at 3149 Sweet Road, tax bank number 018 04 15.1. Um, last month, uh, Dan Eladino was in, presented. Preliminarily on the site plan, uh, we had um, questions and comments. We know after that meeting and uh, letter dated April 18th um, from Tim Barrup, our codes enforcement office, that was a summary of uh, items that we were looking for um, answers to. Um, We'll go over those tonight. We also were waiting. Uh, this also is referred to the Onondaga County Planning Board, and we have their comments uh, from their meeting dated August or April 26th. Um, Dan has given us new maps that we received this week and or end of last week, excuse me. And there are um, some handwritten notes that he has included on these as well. Um, I guess first off, um, we visit the letter that Tim sent in. Uh, you can see in the map the first item, the row of parking. So, may I give the summary of the five two or Us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think it's important. All right. So, um, I wanted, this is Jeff Staggerwald. He's my partner in the business, uh, proposed business. And we are proposing to build an addition to the back of Heritage Hill that replaces the current barn, Quonset Hut. And underneath will be the storage for the tractors and stuff and the things that we have in the Quonset Hut. Um, so it'd be basically on the almost the same footprint and above would be a meat processing facility and meat processing is not slaughter. It's nothing. It's the USDA uh, butchering is happening at a USDA plant um, as we currently do right now. And we will receive back the quarters for however Jeff needs it, which he's here to fully explain the whole process to then turn it into ground beef, steaks, sausage, et cetera. Very little waste, if anything. Similar operations that we do right now with smoking, except on highly efficient commercial smokers. Um, very little use of water. 12 to 16 employees. Closed facility, not open to the public. Two bathrooms for employees only. And that's the what we're proposing for that business. So. Dan, last time you were in here, uh, I'm just reading the new sheet here. You're saying the application requesting seven days a week, three eight hour shifts. I think that's just the last time you were here. It was less than that, I believe, wasn't it? It's just one. Shift. Well, yeah, it's it's just, it's going to be one shift initially. Okay. Um, but we need to reserve the okay. option as market demand uh, dictates. Do you have other facilities where you do this already? I have a New York State inspected facility on Grand Boulevard. We've been processing there since 1936 on yep. the north side of Syracuse. And you'll, that'll continue to operate? That will continue to operate, yep. That one be certified USDA? Um, it cannot. Because? It doesn't have the infrastructure set up. Uh, it, would, it would be cost prohibitive for us to do it, and the size is not um, suitable also. 
do have a question that the animals elsewhere slaughtered and brought in. Um, talk about waste. I realize you just said there would be very little waste, but still there would be some product of waste. How and where is that disseminated or where do you dispose of it? So um, the waste that I think you could expect would be um, beef, primarily beef fat and, and any bones. Um, most of the slaughterhouses that we deal with and, and the suppliers that we deal with don't wish to pay the freight to ship the weight of the bones. So almost everything is coming without bones that we would need to make our sausages. Um, the bones that we would be processing would be, for example, uh, porterhouse steaks, um, anything that that the end product requires the bone, which then would be sold to the customer. So there really wouldn't be any. Uh, in fact, at our current operation, um, we actually buy center cut femur bones so that we can provide that as a product for people that like to give them to their dogs. Um, so we used to, back 50 years ago, get the sides of beef in and we would break them down further. And then we would have more bones, which we would essentially give away to customers for either rendering down for their own beef stock and or uh, to give to their dogs. Um, currently, we generate about uh, one ha half a barrel of what we would consider rendering waste um, at our current operation. And so that gets picked up and delivered off site uh, once every two weeks. It's like baker commodities. Correct. Yeah. JC rendering. Yeah. Yes, we intend to be able to make uh, dog bones, uh, which will sell very well for us and use uh, fat for suet and stuff like that. So really, you should, like we said, our goal is to utilize all of that because everything can be sold. So your basic waste leftover is your, your ash from smoking, which are high efficiency smokers, 75 gallons of wash water a day, which is being captured in tanks and sent off site. So our plans for this include all septic materials to be captured in tanks, including from the bathrooms to be shipped off-site. Um, so. For for the addition. For the addition, yeah. Right, right. Yep. Ashes from the smoking would be, where would you dispose of those? We actually never have to ever dispose of ashes at our current location. We have two smokehouses that we run. Um, they literally just incinerate and they're, I mean, they, they, there is no, um, no clean out of ashes. Just so I understand it, so there'll be no septic system for your portion. That's so the, the tanks. So the 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 um, all the washout waste from the USDA, which is about seventy five gallons a day, based on Jeff's, uh, it goes to a two thousand gallon holding tank that's now going to capture all of our brewery waste. It's part of the new field that we're finalizing with the county. So that all gets captured in that holding tank and sent off. In the beginning of the project, we'll have the bathroom waste also being captured in a holding tank until the new system is proven based on Heritage Hills usage to show the excess volume. And then once the excess volume is shown, then we'll ask the county if the septic waste from the employee bathroom can go out there, if there's adequate space for it. Um, otherwise, until then, it's gonna be shipped off site. So as of right this moment, you do not have county health department approval. No, I'll have to, I can give you a DPC. Yeah. You don't have anything in black and white. No, I don't have anything in black and white. Where we're at, they asked for, um, so they asked for uh, a tank survey. So I have the surveyor wasn't available till last week. So I did a tank survey. Um, my engineer said once he's got he's got those results, he gets the plan into them. They said it's ready to go as far as putting uh, we're putting the power lines in um, next week. Um, to power up everything, and we've got all the equipment there. So uh, that was a feedback. No, not black and white. I can get that for you, but I'm not. We're not intending to do anything until we have that, anyways. So, it's, you know, is this an above ground tank, a temporary tank uh, for the for the for the new building? For the septic, everything would be in ground, including ground. including the waste storage one with alarms and everything like that, and then pumped out. The one I got to build for 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 both of these is going to be in the front of Heritage Hill, and it'll be a uh, a driveway or a vehicle approved tank that can go in the yep, yep. thing. But that's what they agreed to to be able to capture all of that. So that goes to this water treatment plant. Whoever pumps it out, they yeah, can, yeah, yeah, they test it for for ingredients. But again, 
it's washout water from process or yeast or washout from the stainless steel tanks in the brewery, and that's it. But do you need permits for temporary storage and the uh, yeah, they'll shipping of the waste? Yeah, uh, no, you don't need a permit for the shipping of the waste, but I need the county health approval on that plan for the building. But they they liked it. They said we just have to get the uh, base system, you know, up and going. So and they're waiting for an engineer's approval on the tank. Is that what they're the, a survey of the tank locations? Yeah. And that's what okay. that's what cost me two weeks on it. And so we're ready to go to put the power lines in and everything like that. But it took them a while to get the survey done. So and engineers this, got that, and it's and going. This will be temporary until you get your full blown system in. This will be able to start the full blown system. The DEC has stepped back now. Believe it or not. So they've handed it all off to the county, back to the county. So the DEC is like, okay, they're happy with the capture system. So now the county just wants the final plan with the GPS coordinated tanks exactly where they're at. Come walk through with us and then start putting the equipment in and get it going. Do you have in writing from DEC that they've signed off? Eric, okay. my, Eric my engineer does. So it's, they put it to the county. They're waiting, they're giving it to the county approval. Yeah, that here. Tonight with you. No. But, but Dan, this this storage and shipping off site is that temporary or is that going to be the permanent system? That's permanent. Okay. With everything except for potentially the employee bathrooms. That'll be a separate. That'll be separate. System. But yeah, no, this is permanent. Everything will be captured and sent off site. Yeah. And that's just for the for that and the, and the brewery and the brewery base. Yeah. yeah. How, so big that, How big are the tanks? Oh my God. That one is 2,000 gallons. All the new tanks that I put in the fields, I got seven tanks. There's 2,000 gallons each. And that tank is $12,000. I mean, just. That's, so, how often is a truck going to be coming to unload or empty them? 75 gallons a day. And then you know, I got to pick the brewery, the brewery, the brewery washout. You know, we're going to figure that out as we're going. I won't know that till we start switching over to that process. But the brewery is going to be generating more of that than that facility. The, the USDA facility is 75 gallons a day. So I'd be just trying to figure so truck traffic of coming in. Or how so often would the truck come to empty it to, to take it? Less often than Circus Haulers comes to take trash. Yeah, and, to, you know. now the 75 gallons, is that per eight hour shift? For 24 hour day. That would be for eight hour shift. Eight hour shift. Oh, that's correct. So when you and it, it might and it might not be three times that as we wouldn't be cleaning necessarily as thoroughly if as if we you're going shift shift. shift, 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 shift yeah. Yeah. You, could, you could use that as a baseline for sure. And when you say employee bathrooms, uh, what about general public bathrooms in the microbrewery right now? Where where does that discharge go? The septic field. So current, the current septic field, yeah. The current one. Yeah. Okay. The original septic field. Put that and, and do you have an issue with that one? or is that, that Yeah, one? that's where this came out of with the county. During that super saturated 2021 yeah. June, and I had a clogged line in it, and it breached. And so county health came out and said, okay, so let's, let's get, they said, your system's not big enough. I said, okay, well, let's put plans together for, you know, what we need. And so we... You know, I had an engineer, got the whole plans together. By the time the county approved those plans, so we were ready to go in the spring of 2022, and Nicholas Excavation started putting it all in. You know, like I told you before, we spent a quarter of a million dollars on this system last year, and it's sitting there. And towards the end of the project, the DEC came in and said they needed approvals. We had not been told they needed approvals. It's not common in ag. It's not even been common in breweries. It's starting to become common because I've heard that uh, – never yeah, orchards is going through this now so that we had to stop and then it was a back and forth on what now dec is involved and they wanted to see all these things but they can never the two sides are just never i mean it was it was stuck in this bureaucratic loophole i want to get the thing going i've spent a quarter of a million dollars i'm paying four thousand dollars a month on this thing and it's not even being used now i'm not having any problems with the current system because it's dry out and it lines not clogged but the money spent, it's a good system. I want to get it in there and you know get it. So your 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 bathrooms are still using the existing system. Yeah. Then you'll shift over to the, the new system. And what happened with the speedies permit? Is that still 
something. Yeah. Else. So the county, the county, the, the what <clears throat> my engineer was told is that the, that they will find once the counties approve the drawings, we can hook up the system, and then the DEC will file the speedies permit from that. They want to see the DC has handed this over to the county and said, we want to see county approval of the plans. We're okay with the, you know, the tank in the ground, everything like that. They were actually okay with 250 gallon totes, but the county wanted to see a 2000 gallon tank in the ground. So I got a quote from Tim. And like I said, the surveying things are out and once they're in, should be good to go. But I understand we're not going to be moving forward until that, but oh, what the goal is, is to have a conditional approval based on that and the letter from the county working on the stormwater um, thing that Marty Voss said. So I got the engineer working on that and um, they'll do their driveway study, whatever it is that entails. So. Go on with the, uh, the things that we had asked about last month. Obviously on the map, the there had been a row of parking that was indicated that was clearly within the, the road right away. Um, that has been removed. Also list number of related customer parking spaces, ADA accessible spaces, as well as number of employee parking, which you had. Uh, so what did you say was removed? The row of parking uh, along the road. Oh, you've already. It's on. Oh, okay. It's on. Yeah. Um, you yeah. haven't done any of the work. No. At the farm yet. So. No, I uh, see they want it done for existing. <clears throat> I just got to figure out how to do it, whether I get like some concrete barriers or curbing. Uh, it's not feasible to plant grass right there. Um, so we'll figure that out. Um, but yeah, as far as the plans go, they want to see revised plans where they've gone. And that's what those are. So what were your numbers again? Because we don't have a written one. Okay, so I, I, and I have them summarized. This is the one I'm submitting to you, and I'm happy to get them all done in their thing. But so you've got, um, you have got eight total ADA spaces in the Heritage Hill meet coast side, 26 total employee spaces, 78 total regular brewery spaces, and then 206 overflow and event spaces. Okay, so basically you take 78 plus 206, I have 284 total spaces. Okay. And you indicated the overflow is mainly good weather, summertime. Yes. Because it's grass. So exactly. I do have a question of if this is improved, approved, um, you indicated like a, um, well, get going on it, but my concern is Construction, a lot of it would be, I'm assuming, taking place during the wintertime. And that's going to take up some of your parking there. So what's your backup parking plan while this is being built? Because you're not going to be able to safely access your overflow if the weather's questionable. So, um, so once we have approval, um, we're going to start, the first thing we're going to do is dig geothermal lines, which will run under this parking over here and then cover that all up with millings. And we'll have the, all of those additional spaces that you're seeing over here open. All right, construction, this, when we take down the quonset and we rope it off, we'll actually have more parking because the quonset's closer to the road. So it'll open up this row of parking for us that didn't exist before. So um, that's, that's the plan. Um, I, I, you know, and the overflow. I've parked in overflow in February for winter carnival, we just plowed it off, you know, ahead of time and it froze and cars were there. And, you know, um, while this is being built, you just gotta take it easy on what you're having, you know, that's it. Like, cause we got, there's gonna be a lot going on. I gotta, you know, that's, but the good part is, you know, we'll be through most of the summer if we go, if we're able to go as planned and I don't think you're gonna lose much at all. We're most likely gonna gain. But it's going to be like any construction site. You're just going to have to have temporary barriers up and well, work is going not, on. Be, not do any festivals or anything like that. Just have a normal course of business. I think we're going to be okay. That overflow parking has been, it's been awesome. Like, I mean, you can, that hill is so well drained that, you know, I have had no issues with it. I don't have tire marks. It's still all the grass is growing and cars parked there. They've been parking there the past couple of weeks, you know, since the, 
warm week in April. So it's done its job. Nobody's on the road. Nobody's across the street. They're following the signs. And I've noted on here, Sue, all the signs that you asked for. I'm going to give this to you. Um, uh, all the current ones that say enter, that say exit, what the colors are, what the size are, where I have A-frames pointing people where to go, where I have an A-frame for advertising, and I have an A-frame for the overflow parking lot. Do you have a Charles exhibit of what they look like? Um, I, I described them and I can take quick pictures and send them to you because I got to um, send you, I'm going to use Holbrook's sign as an example of ours. So I took a picture of it. Okay. That's basically, that's the eight by six. The, 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 the post design is nice on it. And the only thing that I would potentially add is an LED thing at the bottom that maybe says open or closed or whatever, because that's important. Um, otherwise, that's the picture I have for you. So I'm happy to go take pictures of those signs and send them to you. Um, we also asked indication of parking areas, what would be gravel uh, versus paved, and it is uh, um, the kind of grayish area would be paved area. Mm -hmm. uh, we just talked about signing. Or paved? Uh, paved in front of the building. The gray area is paved. Okay. Fully, fully paved. And then after that is uh, rolled millings. Great. Like we have now. Which is almost pavement anyway. It is just you still get potholes, so some yeah. <laughs> that are impossible to repair. Possibly so. Uh, parking, traffic flow, advertising, mm -hmm. you indicated locations in that master plan, mm -hmm. uh, size, materials, colors, label, means of business. Uh, please provide a letter from the county highway department listing and improving all driveway. For new larger parking areas, so that's going to be addressed with Marty's comments from DOT. Um, so I reached out to him. He said, "Once I address uh, his comments on the county thing, then um, that will have been addressed." We'll provide well, a letter. Once you, can you explain it? Once you, what did you say? Once so, you address the county things, okay. county's comments. Uh, about from the county refer on okay. water and then the okay. traffic study or whatever he said. Okay. So I'm gonna so um <laughs> we're gonna work with Marty to get all that going. It's it's number three on your comments right there. Yeah. So that did right address you then at that point the county DOT is addressed. Okay. And um, Tim did um came up to do occupancy loads on all the buildings and decks and everything. So, So number three on the county's uh, comments, yeah. the uh, storm water pollution prevention plan and traffic data, they kind of tie that to the drains along the road. Now it's, it has to do with the fact that disturbing more than an acre of land and need a permit from New York State DEC for stormwater permits requires the preparation of a slip. Well, they're two separate items. Yeah, you just sort of put them together there with not the, related. Yeah. Well, I just meant that's part of his comments. So in, in yeah. the comments, they put them together and it yeah. was confusing. Yeah. yeah. Like SWIP was on the DOT. Yeah, SWIP is separate, separate. from the DOT. Yeah. The DOT probably wants to see it to make sure it doesn't affect the county highway. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's why, that's why I thought the drainage ditch along the road or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll comment, Dan, driving by there um, Saturday night. Um, there were cars parked, and there was one pickup in particular. You could have taken his bumper was right over the white line. It uh -huh. was right next to the driveway. And so uh -huh. How did people see around this? Yeah. Out? Um, you got to come up with some kind of plan to keep the cars yeah. out of that area. There was about seven or eight of them that, you know, I, I think last time around we had asked for some kind of curb cut because, yeah, it's gravel. It's going to be tough to get grass to grow in there, but something to keep that area clear. And it's a safety issue for people pulling out because it's right next to the, the exit. Well, well temporarily the for this week, I'll I'll drill some holes in the ground and put those step in posts, which I've done in the past there. Mm -hmm. And just put like, if I, worst case cost tape or like maybe that white fence and stuff like that. So I'll get that taken care of. And then I just want to have a, a nice looking longer term plan. I don't know what that is, but I'll, I'll do that this week. Okay. So it's all set. 
But you can, saw that no parking, like this. you can put a no parking sign up and people are going to park in it. Yeah, you can do that, it. Yeah, exactly. You have, to, you have to fence them and herd them. Basically. Yeah. Yes. Got to do it. Yes. Where's the beer? Yeah. Very <laughs> much. So I, I will take care of that this week so we don't have that problem. It does look like too. And the, the ingress and egress Hard driveways, to you know, the nice grass area and so on. And it's yeah. pretty obvious, like, yeah, nobody's going to park in that area and it keeps me back and off of it. Yeah. And, um, I'll take care of that. We'd like to come up with something that, yeah, is aesthetically nice, but does the purpose and improves the safety of mm -hmm. One that added to the site plan and operation. It's a board thinking. I, I would think it's just something on the site plan. I mean, you, we can't require him to prevent people illegal no, parking. But you can. Do we want to put something in a place that will prevent it? And does you do you want that on the yeah, plane? It should be in the city plan. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. already been issue. Yeah. So Dan, you can come up with what that is, propose it, and well, if I react. just do it, if I just do curbing, then beyond the curbing, I can figure out how to make that look better. Right. It's better than those big concrete blocks, I and mean, that's a little ridiculous. And blah, blah, blah. they hit them well, no, though. Uh, I know. If you guys are good with curbing, then I'll put curbing because then I can make it look better with I mean, at a later date. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Something definitive to okay. keep them out of there. And you know. okay. I. We asked for a cut sheet showing the exterior lighting. I think that was yeah, yeah. two of them. There's okay. box style and then there's pole style. Oh. Which we dark sky oh, color. Yeah. And that's been submitted and everything's okay with that, John. Uh, please show on the site plan where portable bathrooms may be located when needed to serve public. Uh, what we have only showed two. I think you had another couple. Maybe. I added a couple. So I'm, I'm gonna all these handwritten notes will get put on the site plan because I got to update the curbing anyways. So I'll get you a new site plan that has. That's all going to be. Anything I've handwritten will be be permanent. And the one uh, barn that you redid, just revisiting. I know that there's bathrooms in there, but they are. Totally offline and there's no water. There's nothing. They're locked. They'll never be hooked up. No, nope. no. Nope. Doors will. If 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 they were, it will have gone through county health to get approval on adding them to a septic field or something like that. But not until that's the case. I'm not even going to approach that subject until we get the system up and going. So, and if and then they have to be redone to meet county standards anyway. So they're locked and that's it. Uh, Kim, who came up with occupancy loads? Yes, I do. If you could get that, I guess, to us in a letter and then um, correlate that, that doesn't match up with the parking. I don't know. Right. Yes. John and I are going to repeat. Kim Barry, who's our codes enforcement officer, and he uh, so was linked off. Different buildings and checking out the capacities this past week, two weeks. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got one other thing. The surveyor also is processing the paperwork for combining the two parcels into one. Yeah, I just felt that too. Okay, not do it a lot. I'm sorry, turning the house. Turning the one parcel into this. Yeah. A lot more in the last time. Yep. Yep. So it's working on that. Uh, what are you thinking, Sue? If if this is a success, will you close the Grant Boulevard operations? Uh no, there, there's no plan for that. Okay. I've been in my family for generation so and it's still a great little storefront and uh we have no plan on closing that of course you know <laughs> you think it happened anything that is definitely not planned <laughs> as covid showed us that's correct um we also asked for a written outline uh, regarding specific operation matters 
covering such things as daily operating hours of uh, both the meat processing plant and the brewery, um, expected delivery times for each business, hours of music play, and expected times for fireworks display. Um, Dan has given us a one-page outline. Um, basically, the on the meat processing plant, they're proposing a full cart wash of seven days a week for three daily eight-hour shifts. However, they would start with five days a week, a single shift from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. shift. Um, their hope is that as demand grows, um, that they would be able to um, increase their shifts from there. Um, and you so, did. So my qu question, just present. to interrupt, is, yeah. is, the, is the rest of that paragraph based on the one shift in terms of truck traffic and whatnot, or yeah. is it, it's based on one shift? Yeah, your truck traffic's not going to change. Your, your deliveries in the early morning and your, and your shift. So even if you're going three shifts, yeah. your yeah. truck's not going to change. No, sure. No, the people I deal with would deliver at midnight. So okay. everything will be coming. Right. And you know, keep in mind the building is um, you have some windows in the front for aesthetics. This production area is completely sealed. It's 32.6 degrees. It's insulated. So it's cold. There's uh, yeah, so so you got any sound light or motion is nothing really but your outside lights and employees coming and going. Um and you indicated last time that you know you've got the one box truck that we're all familiar with and so on, but you're going to use that truck to bring the meat back with. So that's a refrigerator. It's a reefer truck, yeah. Control okay. truck. And then you're going to turn around and load your beer in it for deliveries. Or if we um we are going to sign with a distributor and they pick up when they need it, when they pick up beers and they pick up just like they do now, like early, early in the morning, just like the food purveyors and stuff. It would depend on, you know, our demand that they drive, you know, so that can change. Um, I, I don't know. I've never done distribution before. It's um, we're only going to be in central New York area. So I don't, they keep as much in stock as they can. So they come up for a load of what we got. Um, so they probably, I'm guessing probably twice a week, if you're typically once a week. And then if you had like a, like a customer ordered a bunch and they wanted to restock with something or potentially we could run it to them. Um, I'm not going to say who it is, but they're local. So, um, because I haven't signed the deal. So freight trucks or tractor trailers, uh, just under dog beverages. You've seen them. It's the, like the love app blue little mini six wheelers. It's got the, the fifth wheel on it. Zoom around and delivers to the poppy mall and to our place. Okay. And if you get, uh, yeah, your custom deliveries or your, you know, I'm ordering a box or a quarter of beef or whatever, those deliveries, um, do you foresee like, okay, Tuesday's the day that we ship everything out or is it going to be, we get an order every single day and we're just going to get them out within X hours? For which type of product? Uh, so like the meat shipments, like the, the distribution boxes. So the subscription boxes? Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be, that would be, I would think once a week or twice, maybe, depending on how many there are, obviously. But, but I, that tra that's so the boxes are refrigerated, so you're not having so it's your typical like M or it'd be like UPS, FedEx, everything like that. That's normally already yeah, having yeah, everything just go overnight. You'd be packing them in like packs and yes, and everything's frozen too. Um, so on the distribution, on the beer distribution, though, you've got, so you're doing some beer distribution now. Yeah, self-distribution. So we're always running back and like running our little van or our box truck to places. We do that now. Okay. You're allowed to self-distribute as a farm brewery and you capture that margin. But if you service Wegmans for a year, like we have eight Wegmans, you realize it's better off giving that to somebody else because it's a yeah. lot of work and it's a lot of back and forth. So it's more efficient. So we basically will ship beer to a warehouse in Liverpool 
and then they take care of it from there. So our traffic actually ins and outs go down because of that, because mm -hmm. it's just, they're they're doing the whole thing. We're not self-distributing anymore. We're not running anywhere with our stuff. So on average, how many cases a week do you figure are going out? Well, you know, it go, there's ebbs and flows, right? You know, I mean, it, you know, certain beers like PBLD is great during these summer holidays and stuff. So Wegmans picks up more, but not a lot. I mean, probably, you know, 10 cases a week, but you're running them, you know, that's just Wegmans, right? Maybe. Um, but then, you know, we'll go have the dome. Um, so I'd say we're going to have the airport and stuff like that. So you got to run back and forth from each of them. And that comes down to everything just comes out of the distribution center now. So one big load out and then they handle the rest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a much better process. Um, plus staffing, staffing doing it yourself is impossible. So in a, a slate plan and so on, all of a sudden, um, yeah truck in there picking up the, the beer and then UPS pulls in and wants the beef and you know it yeah it could be still seven o'clock in the morning but and your supplies of fresh canning supplies and so on all of a sudden all the trucks are there at the same time. What are you doing with them or how are you where are they going? We hadn't done it, we do it now you know, you'll have Cisco and Renzi come in you know um sometimes because they have like the same delivery days and stuff. The beauty is Heritage Chill isn't open. Um and if the 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 um, the meat facility is open. You only have the employees over in there, so you have all this parking area for them to stage and wait. I've never had trucks out on the road unless they're just bad drivers that don't know where to go, how to pull in. You know that. So um, we've been able to accommodate them now, and with a paved, nice parking lot, so we don't see that being a problem going forward either. Most of your restaurant suppliers, like if you go downtown early in the morning, those, yeah. they, they want it done early in the morning. Yeah, they they don't want to they don't want to deal with traffic. traffic. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, the Amazon, or no, I see an Amazon, the, um, let's say FedEx truck coming in, well, he doesn't have to deal with cars because everything's going to be marked and he's got to clear in and out of the dock right there and then out. So there's, there's no cars parking. The next part with paved will have lines painted. There won't be cars parking where they shouldn't be. So it'd be much better. Um, just a question of clarification in that. On the meat packing, you're saying in case either seven or seven thirty to three thirty, and that it wouldn't conflict at all with the brewery. But yet, the brewery would be open, like, typically Wednesday through Sunday. Typically opening between eight a.m. and twelve p.m. Opening, and closing by ten. So, it would be hours during the day that both would be open. Two things, like right now, we're open Thursday at four. And Friday at noon. Okay, so there's only Fridays so overlap. The second thing is, is we're busy when Heritage Hill and you've all you all know is busy Friday evening, Saturday when the sun is shining, and Sunday when the sun is shining. And Saturday and Sunday are the days that our parking lots are full, and we're not going to have we're, the, the, the the meat facility is not going to be open on the weekends, right? We put that in there because I just don't yeah, like we're we're going into the pack though if if. You're operating all indoors. Yeah. You're not interfering with. And we're not bringing any customers to the location either. So it's just what whatever employees are on site, their cars will be in the back at the employees. Right. So have operating at the same time, nobody would even notice. Correct. Yeah. And it's not during your peak busy times, which we've been even five years. Even up. peak busy times. Uh, yeah, we got the. They're still in. As many as 16 cars in the back. And you're sealed in a building that you're not. Right. Except when your employees need to go get a beer. Right. And mm -hmm. not when they're operating. Don't let them see. Not a good competition. Yeah. Well, deliveries. Sure. Deliveries, I, I, I understand. But well, and our intention, too, is to use any of the services that Heritage Hill already uses, for example, like laundry services. Yeah. We'll use the same one. So if they're already coming, we're going to tie in with them on anything that's got overlap like that. So, and so most of those delivery people do not want to be there no. on Saturday or Sunday during a Buffalo Bills game. No. no, they're in and out before, you know, before any of us are even there, they have their own keys. They go in, you know, that's how that works. Unless you want to be there at 6 AM, you know, they just, it's, that's how the industry works and they're gone before and they, they make 
us the first stop because it's way out in the middle of nowhere. So they work right. their way back to where they're going. So it, 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 I don't know, it worked really good. We've had we've had zero issues um, with deliveries <clears throat> and zero issues with our shipments. I don't anticipate that changing at all. Like Jeff said, the packaging and stuff, it's all going to come from pretty much the same people. And um, yeah. Do you have a picture or schematic of brewery and this barn attached to each other? Um, no, um, just the, um, if you look at, um, if you go to page, I don't know if they're numbered, but this one uh, it shows the front of it. And I don't know if you um, can go to that on the slide. Oh, there you go. Back up one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the front of the building. Okay. Uh, if you look to the right, the right of it is going to be attached to Heritage Hill. There won't be an even. That's actually the two buildings are going to be attached to each other. But you don't have an actual picture of what it would look like. No. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, while we're on the screen. Lower left hand. I realize that the door down below the barn, that's the one at yep. the lower level. So you go and park your whatever storage equipment that's currently in the bonds. Uh, that's indicate indicator of stairs going up to the other overhead door. Yes. Okay. And land would be landscaped up to that door. Correct. Uh, um, you know, the dumpster would be located. In the front of that, uh, underneath that door. So if you could walk, that door would open up. You have a trash cart, and you can roll right into the top of the dumpster. And um, it's gonna be on the top dumpster. Yeah, kind of like Tigerberg had, you know, where you could walk over the top of it and dump through the top of it. So it was like a loading dock level. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard. Well, I mean, it's very good for employees because I actually had. My only workers' comp claim from somebody throwing a bag of trash up, you know, I'm pulling a muscle. So, like, it just eliminates that altogether. So, now we're still looking at it. You got a porch on the backside, or what's the purpose of no, the overhang? Nope. The overhang is to cover the walk in coolers, which will be uh, to the exterior of the backside of the building. So, um, and th uh, from the front. So, they don't need to be, they're, they're already fully insulated and everything like that. So, they don't need structure around them. So, they like that silver you know coolers that you see it out and the, the overhang is to protect the uh, compressors that are on top of them and like i said the basement is for you know storage of materials and supplies that aren't that aren't needed on a regular basis and then our, our farm equipment and uh, Please stand. So drawn by us. What's the company or who's doing these? Well, I have. Um, so Pat Lamy is my architect, and um, Steve. He took care. Of, he's coordinated the engineer. It's um. Would you? That's not. That's not it. It's a. Uh, it's one half of these say Fortune Engineering Group. That's it's probably this. It's probably that I was giving you his name. Like I said, the architect coordinated all of the engineering for me. Yeah, Fortune Engineering Invoice. Okay, so but it's um from a lot of people know. And I can get that for you. I just can't seem to look at it right this second. I mentioned at the last meeting, Steve Snell. It's not Steve Snell. I was thinking that because he was on the okay. town board. Um, Steve is his name. But... They're all licensed, you know, engineer because they had to do the 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 base that's got to be structural steel. So that's the whole engineering study on it. So pillarification, Steve Snell is not involved. Steve Snell is not involved in this. No. It's, it's 
It's S S, but I couldn't remember his last name. He said Pat was Pat was my point of contact for the whole thing and and all the needs of it. He coordinated with engineering. That's uh, Pat Weemi out of Auburn. Yeah. You know what her is in the term? It's his, it's, his own. it's his firm, right? Pat Weemi Architectural. Yeah. Yep. The board have any other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Thank you. The discussion about approving all the other existing things that went into place over time. Mm -hmm. Is all that stuff on the map? And that's, yes. Everything's on the map. Yeah. Everything's on the map. And, and it was surveyed too. This was referred to county planning, and they had a meeting again April 26, 2023, and we've gotten their comments back. And they had three comments um, to our board, and um, I touched on them. But number one, the town must ensure on a Douglas County Health Department and New York State Department of Environmental Conservation approvals as necessary for both the current and any proposed sanitary sewage facilities on site prior to municipal approval of the site plan. Number two was per Onondaga County Department of Transportation, the applicant must remove all existing par parking from the Onondaga County right away along the front of the parcel and replace the paved gravel surface with grass and or other surface materials so as to prevent the continuation of parking in this area. Site plan must be modified to reflect the required changes prior to municipal approval. Number three, the applicant must also coordinate with the Onondaga County Department of Transportation regarding submission of a drainage study or stormwater pollution prevention plan, also known as SWIP, and traffic data and access plans for the project. The department advises that the two southerly driveways will be required to meet commercial driveway standards and no additional driveway access will be granted upon Sweet Road. The municipality must ensure any mitigation as may be determined by the department is reflected on the project plans prior to or as a condition of municipal approval. So with the county comments, First and foremost, um, going back to number one, um, we must have from Onondaga County Department of Health, New York State DEC, in black and white, the approvals as necessary for both current and proposed sanitary sewage facilities on site prior to this board approval of the site plan. The only way um, we could go against the county's recommendations. However, it would be a majority plus one vote to override it and to have good reason thereof. So that's, I think a lot of our questions early on, Dan was mm -hmm. trying to find out if we had an answer in black and white from both those departments and if you could produce that to us tonight. And you told us that we did not have that with you tonight from them. Um, the second one we talked about, uh, modifying the site plan so that the, the parking area um, is a definitive on there so that cars don't park um, in the road right away. And then the third one that we talked about was the, the SWIP and the uh, report from um, DOT. So that one was the only one that they specifically said that you could make a conditional approval on, but that's where we stand tonight with the information that we have at hand tonight. 
um, we will still um, have enough info, I believe, that we can do our um, secret determination and then we will open the public hearing and continue on. As far as, you know, we get through the public hearing and so on, then we'll see where we are after that. So any other questions, comments from the board? Basically, with the seeker, because we know that we can't approve it without the issue is the septic, and we can't approve. So if the seeker, well, we can. Well, here when we're going to we're going to there's the eleven questions. Everyone knows what they are. The uh, question is: Will the proposed action impact existing public or private water supplies or public <laughs> or private wastewater treatment facilities? The answer when you come to it, will be discussed. And the answer is that, that a moderate to large impact uh, may occur. However, it can be mitigated if the county, um, you know, county approves it. So there would, we can go through the seeker. We're just not going to be able to give, a it, it's basically a conditional negative declaration okay. pending. Yeah, yeah. The county coming in, right? So, fair enough. Comfortable, never comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Get into this one. So, okay, all right. So, at this point, we will enter into the secret determination. Dan, you understand that, right? What we're talking about, yeah. yeah. It's um. Just would have a question for next steps. We can wait till after that we go through the public parts, so. right? Because the the question on Groundwater would be the speedies and all of that. That's all has to do with groundwater. Mm -hmm. And without the speedies permit in place and the county giving its approval, we can't say that it's been mitigated. Correct. Right. But but it is mitigatable, most likely. <laughs> Everything is mitigatable. So so through my engineer, okay, I was told that the county, as soon as they have the drawings and everything, are gonna come up and we're gonna light the system up and put it in place. Okay, which means it's operating. Right? <laughs> the DEC, according to the engineer, already said that. So then they're going to file speedies, but the DEC will have already agreed to do yeah. the project. So at that point, are you going to have to wait until the speedies permit is issued, even though we know the DEC has already said yes, the county has already said yes, and it's operating before I get approval for the project? Because we're talking getting next month yeah. approval versus in three months down the road, which puts you six months out in construction. At this point, we're tied to what the county is saying, what we need before we can approve it. Yeah. It doesn't say anything about speedies, though. No, no. So it doesn't say anything about No, no, no. 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 So, okay. That's right. So we'll be okay. So I'll be okay. It's really the county help. County help. Because yeah. yeah. the DEC is deferred to that. We don't have to do, if we want to wait, we can wait on the. Um, on the seeker and move forward with the public hearing. And if we give it a, a conditional, we still have to go back to it, correct? Go back to it. But we just have to go back to the one question. So maybe others, there may be other issues brought up in the public hearing that may sway your determination whether there are other large potential large impacts. I say let's hold off on that. Yes. 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 Right. So we are going to defer the seeker at this point. We will have to circle back around to it eventually. With that, um, we will be entering into public hearing. Again, I have a list of. I make a motion we open the public. I was going to go to Jake Cron first. Do what? Jake Cron. I'm going to go Okay. Kevin says motion. Carl says second. All in favor, open the public Aye. hearing. Aye. 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 Okay. I'll pause it. Motion carries. Okay. Um, list, I'll call you up. And if you state your name and address, speak to the board, please. Um, I am going to request that I understand that there's some have very similar feelings um, or opinions on this and so on. If somebody has already said it, let's 
keep it short and concise. We just want to say ditto to what was said before. Just say ditto. We get it. Okay, we understand it. We are looking for new and informative presentations to us, something that has not been discussed, something that's pertinent, something that's provable. Okay. Um, be civil, speak to the board, and uh, again, keep it short so we can keep things moving. Sue, and just can I just make one other statement? Just so everyone is on the same page as to the role of this board, <clears throat> this board is not technically empowered to say you can't do something or you can do something. What our job is is to approve a site plan that's been put in front of us and determine whether the building is too big, whether it's the wrong color, or it needs some coverage of trees, blocks and things. But we don't have the power to say, Mr. Paladino, you can't do that. If what he has proposed meets the code, it's a permitted use. And if it's a permitted use in our community, we can modify things, you know, he, the windows are too big or you need to plant more trees or, or any of that. So just so we're all clear that this board can't say, no, Mr. Palladino, you can't do that, even though it's a um, a use that's permitted in our community. Just, just so you're aware that that's what our board is tasked with. Thank you. Good points. Okay. okay. Uh, first on the list, Paul Livingston. Um, can we just speak together, we're married, live in the same house. <laughs> I'm making sure he doesn't forget anything. <laughs> so lighten it up. Yeah. Yeah. Address, please. 3061 Sweet Road. My property is adjacent to Dan's property. We're south. One house, the Cape Cod South. So I have Paris direct Cod. view of what goes on up there all day long. I'm retired, so I can see. I can, I can verify that this issue with deliveries and trucks coming is not impactful. Um, I don't ever see multiple vehicles at the same time. Right? They're backing up at all. It's usually a truck, even though it's a semi sometimes. Um, the trucks don't get in the way of each other. Um, uh, Dan has always been a good neighbor, and I think what he's done in the property is always improves what it looks like. And I believe that this plan that he has is gonna make it look significantly better than the Quonset hut that's there now. Um, and I I guess I should start with, I am speaking in favor of this, this plan. Um, I, I got a letter from some people that are concerned about the, the issue of having smokers running. And I, um, I'm a quarter mile away and I, you can smell the smokers sometimes, but it is so minor and is not even an unpleasant um, thing happening. So I, I don't see that him running smokers is an issue that's going to affect the community. Besides hunger. It does make you hungry. Though. <laughs> um, I just see that Dan's investing in this town, in this area. I think he's taking a big risk to do this. And um, I... Wish them all the success. And we care about the property. We're right next door. We're south. Um, so we care about how it looks and have invested time into in making sure it looks nice. And, uh, you know, we live on the top of a hill. It's windy. When our trash gets dumped into the dumpster, some of it blows right across the field, across the street. We have to rescue our trash cans. So, um, we we care about it. We do the April cleanup that uh, other neighbors do to make sure this area stays looking beautiful. And uh, you know we've been in our house about twenty five years, so we've seen it go from say rural farm. You know, in a farm area, you have all plenty of equipment usually that's rusty. laying around, yeah. rusting equipment, and he has really cleaned it up. Between our house, we have a pasture between the Heritage Hill and us, and that has all been cleaned up. And what maybe was behind, I guess you would say on the brewery site or right behind it used to be a, a flat pad of farm equipment that was maybe no longer working. That's all been cleaned up and that building, the brew house is a good looking building. 
He's done landscape. I'm the flower lady. I really <laughs> think that it's it's made a nice change to the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. What was what was your name? Judy Livingston. Judy. Yeah. We're one house south. Okay. Uh, Nick, how old are you now? Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you stay out of it. I'm like, <laughs> 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 okay, now Natalia. Paladino. Um, Natalia Paladino, three and four nine Sweet Road. I just wanted to stand up here and say that we really do care about the community and making it better and improving things. Um, ever since we opened Heritage Hill, our number one priority has been involving people with agriculture and just showing them what it is and doing what's best for the community. So I just think this is another step in a positive direction. Okay, thank you, Vitaly. Uh, Randall Caladino. Randall Lee Caladino. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Ashley Dan's ex-wife, and I just wanted to also um, stand up and show um, that I fully support everything that he's done. Um, I grew up in Rochester. I did not grow up on a farm. And uh, when we moved here, I was nervous about my kids who were very young at the end of time. That's our daughter back there, but she was six when we moved here. Um, with tractors and whatnot, but this community all knows so well about tractors and to be very mindful of the traffic and, um, that things can be dangerous, like pulling out of that driveway. And everybody knows it's on a hill. So whether there's more cars, more, tr more trucks, more traffic, everybody should prepare themselves to slow down when they are getting closer to that, that area because they know that there's going to be traffic. There's, you know, there's going to be tractors and whatnot. It's, it's something that I had to learn, but that the people of this community should have already been doing for years and years and years, knowing that that was a farm. Um, and I, I just want to say that I hope that people are more supportive in his steps with making this um, area bigger and better. I've been to the Poppy Field Days and the parades, and I, I did fall in love with this little town because it's so focused around family and community and being there and supporting each other. So I have seen the letter that's been going around. It upsets me. And... Obviously, that's not what I want being said about my very good friend and the father of my children. So I hope that more people can open their eyes with this information that was just put forth and be more supportive and realize that he's making a beautiful thing even better and, and giving back to the community as much as he can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what's your current address? Oh, I'm so sorry. 8225 Verback Drive, Manly S. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dan McClurg? McClurg? McClung. McClung. How are you doing? There you go. You this is my wife, Tara. She's going to speak. Tara and Dan McClung, 2985, Michael Babs. So how's everybody doing tonight? Whole house, huh? Uh, yep. So first, I wanted to thank the board for holding this hearing. Uh, we were kind of surprised and a little dismayed when we heard that uh, it was suggested we skip a public hearing on a development like this. Uh, you know, the suggestion, who, I think, who suggested that uh, it was mentioned in the last planning meeting. We saw it on the Zoom. And the question if that was necessary. Oh, oh it wasn't that, it wasn't this board. No, no. Oh, no. So, you know, the, the town and, and we have heard a lot over the years. Uh, originally, Heritage Show was going to be a relatively small establishment, a tasting room. Uh, there was going to be quiet music. Uh, no weddings will be held there. You know, and I could go on. Um, we also noted in, in last month's hearing that, that the noise problems were figured out and there were no complaints last year. Uh, I know we complained, and I know several other people in this room complained as well. Uh, you know, but uh, uh, so the noise issues haven't been resolved. And, and who are those complaints to? Uh, we, we've contacted Dan. Okay, not not to the not not to the town. Station. So uh, you know, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this proposal. So, you know, as we've seen, we've seen the business grow, understand that happens. You know, it's great to see businesses grow and change. And, uh, you know, but the concern is so will this. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to get on thin ice here and, and, and mention the word slaughterhouse because I know that's been bandied about a bit. 
Um, so as far as I can tell, the USDA and New York State don't really differentiate. As a matter of fact, uh, slaughterhouses and meat processing plants share the same SIC code, the industry code. Per New York State Ag and Market Law Article 5A, it's just a matter of inspection. So, you know, uh, and I, I have a list here of all USDA approved uh, meat processing plants in New York State. I think there's 42 of them. Every single one of them is approved for slaughter. Now, but the reason I bring this up, if you guys would like this, you're more than welcome to it. But the reason I bring this up, it's it's not about slaughter. It's about if this gets approved, the town is going to lose some control over what happens in this facility. It's going to become a purview of the state or the USDA. And this is not theoretical. It's already happened. I know some of you were in a meeting in 2019 when the topic of hours came up and the town was told that you, the town could no longer regulate hours in the facility. One of the board members said, and, and I, you know, I, I got this quote, you know, I feel like he didn't end run around us. So, I mean, that's a concern that we have. So, you know, and I know there's going to be some concern about, you know, the town controlling what people do with their property. I'm a big fan of letting people do what they like with their land, you know, but we have zoning laws for a reason, right? As far as I know, I can't open a junkyard or dump waste or, or build a factory. We have laws to protect the community. Neighbors have rights to, I think it's important for us to, consider, to keep that in mind. So I want to talk a little bit about zoning. I, I spent some time looking over New York State Building Codes, and I talked to an engineering friend of mine, and, and we, we kind of looked over some things. And there are several references to meat processing, and it's categorized as Occupancy Classification Group F. Now, what does this mean? This means that this would not be considered agricultural use, but an industrial use. To call this agri agricultural use doesn't really jive with New York State Building Code. And if you guys want some information on that, I, I do I do print some of that out as well. I'd also like to talk about impact. And, and I, we're going to get into some conflicting things here, but I, I, I reached out to some friends that are environmental professionals, um, and I sent them a copy of this proposal to have them look it over. And I said, I said hey, you know, is, is there anything that we should be concerned about as a community here? And uh, so I'm going to read a couple of bullet points. I'm going to keep it brief because I know a lot of people want to talk. Uh, one thing that, that they mentioned was water pollution. Uh, you know, we've heard not a lot of water would be used, but, I, you know, I, I've talked to a couple of professionals. They say, and I'll quote this here, meat packing plants generate significant volumes of wastewater, which contain various, various pollutants such as blood, fat, oils, grease, cleaning chemicals, and bacteria. This water, wastewater can contaminate local water sources, including rivers, streams, and groundwater, if it's not properly managed. They mentioned air pollution. Operations of meat packing releases pollutants into the air. These pollutants include particulates, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and VOCs. And then they, they talked a little bit about the impacts this can have to, to, to nearby residents, such as respiratory and eye throat irritation. Strong odors were mentioned. Strong odors emitted from facilities such as this can impact the quality of life of surrounding communities. So th these are concerns that we have. Waste management, uh, I know it's been mentioned that there's not a significant amount of waste in this particular process, but that was something that was mentioned as a concern. It needs to be handled properly, and if it's not, it can, it can lead to odor, pests, and contamination of soil. Traffic, you know, one quote that I got was, meat packing plants require regular transportation of animals, meat products, and supplies to and from the facility. <clears throat> You've got to keep, if you've got a bunch of employees, you've got to keep them busy, right? So you got to bring materials in, you got to bring the goods out. So at any rate, we are concerned that these issues aren't really adequately being addressed by this proposal. We'd like to really make sure that we are careful and understand this. Um, and to conclude here, I want to talk a little bit about the impact of the community. You know, I thumbed through the, the town master plan, and uh, I want to read a couple lines from the mission statement. We want to enable our residents to live peaceful and fulfilling lives in a rural environment. We want to protect the environment. And yes, we want to preserve ag agricultural land and businesses. You know, my family has, you know, my family has a farm. It's been around for three generations. One of the reasons that we were really drawn to this town was it felt a lot like my family farm. It's a town of 5,000 people, you know, we, you know, really, really similar to Pompeii. You know, I love the sights, the sounds, the smells of this area. That's why we built our house here and we don't plan to leave. So let's not, let's not really kill the character of the town. There's a, there's a line between rural agriculture and industry. So let's try to stay on the right side of that line. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you. Hey, Dan Nugabar.
Can I stand here? Another, take another step. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Over here. You said so. Um, Bear with me. So, take your tag. Hey, John. Don't yeah. say that. Well, I know. But yes. I know. Spell your name for it. <laughs> Ready? Yep. N E U G E B A U E R. The first name's D. Oh, <laughs> sometimes I mess up the last one. Right. I got. Um, 1870 Berwyn Road. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I just think about the comments that fellow made. Um, <clears throat> I've lived here a long time, and, and I certainly appreciate some of the things the fellow uh, and his wife just said. I think our, um, I think a lot of the community, and I was part of the master plan and, and some of those statements. So the community is important to me. One of the things that um, you guys talked about that made sense to me was all, all the health issues and the septic and all those things that have to be proved, and I get that. I didn't really understand the process, so I appreciated that conversation. I would say that one of the things that Dan, I believe, has done an unbelievably great job is addressing all the concerns of the board. So I think anything that you guys have brought up over the years, whether it was the start of his brewery, brewery or the entrances, the exits, the parking, the no parking at Holbrook across the street, I think he's done a great job of addressing all of the board's concerns. And I believe that even though there are concerns with the business he's getting into, trying to get into, that I don't understand them all, but I do believe that anything that you request or ask of him, he will do his absolute best to solve. So that's my comments, and I hope the board continues to support how to get this project done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and Sue, so before you go on, just to clarify something, it, it's not that I want people to look at us, but those speaking for or against an issue need to convince us, not you guys. You know, you typically don't need to be convinced. It's it's this group that needs to be convinced. Go. All right. Uh Joseph Kerr. Yeah, I Thank agree you. with what Dan said. Address, please. 7155 Fulton Road, Copy New York. 7155. 7155. That was a ditto to what Don said? Yes. Any uh, anything else? Well, my family's been here since 1932, and Dan's family's been here since 1950s, early 1950s, and we were always good friends with the Palladinos. And I think Dan is doing something for the town that that I think has been lacking for years. He's trying to improve the infrastructure. Um, I think he's doing one hell of a job up there. If anybody's here has been there to see what he's got and what he's done. Uh, I think it's a good thing that he wants to bring something new to, the, to this town. Thank you. Okay, That's thank it. you. All right. Actually, Judy, you already started the call? I, yeah. Okay. That was easy. Okay, Michael Spellman. My name's Michael Spellman. I'm at 7283 Hamilton Road. And I'm here with Ms. some of my neighbors. This is my wife's wife, Cynthia. Laura. Uh, I'm going to go with what Dan said back there, uh, that uh, there is a lot of issues that we are concerned with, um, especially being here since the, the brewery started. I was here for the first meeting of the brewery, which was going to have a tasting room, which has my concern, my biggest concern, two big concerns. Number one, that is, if that's a tasting room, then I don't know what this is going to turn out to be. And I am concerned about that because, and I heard somebody up there say something about some unapproved improvements that are going to be carried through this whole thing. I don't know how you can do, how you can approve something that's already built. I'm being code enforcement officer of myself for years. Um, I like to see what's in behind the walls usually. My biggest concern besides that is the traffic. Um, <laughs> there is already a traffic problem right now there. Uh, both his 
all three of his entrances, four of them, including the one to the house, um, everybody knows that on that road right there, you're coming up over a hill, you, you're in a blind spot. That overflow parking, people are coming out of there at 10 miles an hour, and you got people coming over the top of that hill, anywhere from 45 to 70. Um, it is just a matter of time before we have a serious problem. Um, based on, again, based on my first meeting with the, with the brewery um, and the words that were spoken at that point, which is we're not going to grow, we're not going to get any bigger, we're not doing anything more than just brewing brew, beer and a tasting room. Um, that's my concern. And I hope you guys all make sure that you put it down in writing as to whatever it is that he comes up with, that it's in writing and he doesn't go past that. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you all. Hey. Uh, Colleen Epstar. <laughs> My name is Colleen McChrystal Apgar. I live at 2944 Michael Avenue. My family has been in Pompey from the 1890s. I'm the fifth generation to live within a two mile radius of the Palladino farm. I'm here to oppose the proposal that is being offered up this evening. I do not feel we need any further growth in the area of Heritage Hill. The noise that comes from the facility is quite impactful on my family. Every weekend, my children say to me, mom, that noise is too loud, I wanna go inside. I have called the facility personally and left messages. I have not had phone calls returned. I have had phone calls returned that said next weekend it'll be better, and it wasn't. I am concerned about traffic. I am concerned about the pollutants that are going to go into the air, into the water. I'm raising my children in the same place that my husband and I grew up in and we love. We don't want them to inherit a town that isn't as clean and serene and beautiful as the one that we grew up in. And I do feel that this facility will have a negative impact on our home. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Dan Heffler. Back here, we're kind of pinned in. We are the western neighbor of the Dan Palladino address. Address. 48, 3040. Joanne Heffler. Mm -hmm. Dan and I live next to each other. 3032 Route 91. Um, wait, wait, wait. One address. Seven. One address. 3048 Route 91. Thank you. Western coast border of Dan's property. And we're going to agree with. Mr. McClug and the other neighbors that are against this project. Um, we fully supported Heritage Hill when he first went in, and it's morphed into something completely different. It has nothing to do with farming. It's a nightclub, it's a bar, and we have music all the time. We're worried about this for our wells and for the other pollution that it could cause. And nobody's even mentioned they're talking about 250 cows across the street. And 50 pigs down below, which are going to be closer to our houses and their houses, which we have heard nothing about the noise or the smell or what's going to happen with those. <clears throat> so we're very concerned about this. And yeah, we're, we wonder, is there going to be some kind of environmental study done to find out what the actual impact is going to be to our wells and our properties around? Because again, right now, the same as this lady here, every weekend, we're listening to music that's not ours. And we hear the crowd noise all day. I know all you guys don't live near there, support Dan. And again, I support Dan's business, but not when it impacts our property. And our house value will go down if we can't sell the house because we got a bar next door. So we're concerned about what this is going to generate as far as how it's going to affect our property also. Because we have as many rights as everyone else in the room. You know, we put a lot of money into our own too. This is my sister, Joanne. She lives next door to me. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have problems with noise. Uh, we have problems with uh, light pollution. Uh, we are concerned about our wells. 
uh, we're concerned about the future growth of the potential meatpacking plant. Um, when Dan originally proposed the brewery, I was there before it opened and he said to me, Dan, um, this is going to be a tasting room. We have occupancy for 100, we're only planning on 50. We have 38 parking spaces. We now have what? 334 parking spaces. We add, oh, and he also said the music was going to be inside one person in the corner. We had music during the holidays all week, 34th of July. We have it during farm days, which goes on for a whole week. Um, Memorial Day goes on for a long time. We have it every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes on Thursday. Sometimes there's a concert out in the middle of the field. We are dealing with this. We moved to the country. We grew up in the country. We wanted it to be quiet. We don't have that. We have texted Dan repetitively during music down, no response. Dan said in the last meeting, music hasn't been a problem. We have backed off last year, reporting this problem to him because he did not <laughs> respond. Okay? Uh, so we are concerned here again that a brewery that has turned into no weddings, weddings, corporate events, um, tons of people up there, thousands of people on the farm days. And now we're going to put in a pe uh, meat packing plant that's only going to use 75 gallons of water a day. You're going to use it one shift, two shifts, maybe three shifts. I don't know about you, but I think I use more than 75 gallons a day myself in my house. So, and then he's talking about 200 heads of beef, 50 pigs. According to what I've researched, that's almost 13,000 gallons of water a day to feed the animals. So we're concerned about our wells. Um, we're concerned about the chemicals that it takes to wash the facility down, uh, where that's going to go. Dan says you're gonna put it into a 2,000 gallon uh, container, and then it's gonna be pumped out and shipped somewhere. We're a little concerned. Is that going to overflow into a leach field? Is it going to poison our wells, our water? He's planning to put a smokehouse in. Are we going to have odors? You know, you're talking about one shift. Maybe we're going to have two. Maybe we're going to have three. Maybe we're going to have 34 parking spaces. Maybe we're going to have 50 people in the in the the, 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 the brewery. And now we know what we have. So we are extremely concerned about the meat packing plant. And if there are no rules in place and this goes through, and then he decides he's going to make it a slaughterhouse, it is going to be really bad. And a friend of mine from high school whose family owns a slaughterhouse, and he said, Joanne, it's nasty, it's bad, the cows will be mowing at night, they know they're going to be slaughtered, it will be horrible. We're already dealing with the noise from the music. What will it be? if he turns it into a slaughterhouse. And then I'll say, all he says today is it's just gonna be a meat packing plant. But then again, the tasting room was only gonna be a tasting room. There was gonna be no weddings. It was gonna be small. Um, so I have a, we have smells, odors, noise pollution, light pollution. We have, Dan said in the meeting last time, 20,000 luminous lights, big, huge, Guess what? We sit down where we live. We have 3,000 foot <laughs> shared property line. And the lights are incredible. It's like living next to Walmart. We have asked Dan Palladino, can you turn the lights off at night? No response. So now we're gonna have a meat planting pan. We're gonna have all these parking places. We're sure there's gonna be a lot more lights. We want you to address that. Could the be mitigated by, instead of having a big huge light, when you have it shined out. Can you turn it into something that's a little more nice, a little more friendly, something that does not affect us as the neighbors? Um, we also deal with, um, since the brewery has increased business, we're also dealing with snowmobile traffic, three-wheeler traffic. We have the farm days. And you, know, you have a lot of people here that are supporting in the community that don't live on the border of the property, experiencing what we do. 
So we want you to take that into consideration. <laughs> and I have a list of our concerns that I would like to, at the end of the meeting, to give you <laughs> so you can see them in detail. And I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Helen Bailey. Yes. Oh, yep. Uh, 2671 Ridge Road. Um, I'm in full support. I don't know why he didn't just go with the slaughterhouse. Um, but uh, he's not. I mean, there's no slaughterhouse around. It's like a long ways away to get taken care of. And um, I think what he's doing, he's going to provide 16, at least 16 jobs to our community, um, which I think is great. And he's provided other people in the community with jobs at the bar, at the brewery. So I am in full support of what Dan's doing for the community. Thank you, Helen. Uh, Alma Hartnett. <laughs> I just want to, what Helen said, what Darren said, and what Joe said, I, I agree with them. What do you mean? 2703 Ridge Road. Joining, yeah, Joanne Heffler just spoke. So Michael Moynihan. Mike Moynihan, 7095 Whitney Farm Lane. I moved up here for a nice, quiet house. I built one. I saw what happened over there. I've been to some of those houses. I have seen how loud it gets. I would be horrified. I found out that this farm cosplaying as a nightclub. Now it's going to be a factory. We're talking three shifts, possibly. That's ridiculous. Uh, my property value was behind my house will go down, and it shouldn't be allowed for my neighbors. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Arch D'Angelo. Say <laughs> too long. That's the at Butch D'Angelo and Carolyn, three three two seven Sweet Road, Jamesville, New York. My mask down so you can hear me. Uh, what you were discussing earlier, the site plan would be combined with the original site plan of the brewery right now. I was wondering if the board could clarify that because, from my experience, heat processing plants have always been classified as commercial indu industrial. Therefore, that would require, if I'm not mistaken, different zoning for that parcel. And in fact, the brewery, the farm brewery, it's originally classified as agricultural, farm agricultural. I believe now that it's a restaurant, brewery, and event center, it probably, which goes to the zoning board, needs to be reclassified as commercial as well. So that's my wish that the board could take a look at that and determine whether or not that is a proper, proper classification, proper classification for that site. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Butch. And Richard Margino. Hi, my name is Richard Margino. Um, I live on uh, 3413 Hedderbury Road in Jamesville. Um, so I live very close to uh, Heritage Hill. I've been there multiple times. I think it's a great place. Um, eating there, they got a nice petting zoo, beautiful views. Um, so the way my house is, I'm on 23 acres on the top of a hill. There's a lot of trees surrounding my house. So in the wintertime, sometimes I see lights when the leaves fall. I hear noise a little bit here and there. It really doesn't bother me. Um, so I have small businesses really it's good for the town. It's the backbone of our community, provides tax revenue, jobs, um, entertainment. Um, it's a good thing. However, I do see negatives of it. 
to all the neighbors. I've spoken to a lot of neighbors, the Hanbury, Pass Falls, Hamilton, Sweet, Michael, and there's a lot of opposition against it. Um, I think we need to know more information about it as far as this has kind of been a rumor going on for the last couple of months that it's going to be three stories high and 10,000 square feet. And I really think the public needs to know more information of how big it is, how high it is, the obstruction, um, possible uh, wastewater issues, drainage issues, um, contaminating a, a well water. So there's a lot, a lot of information I feel the public needs to know more about how it's going to affect us as residents within at least a mile radius. Because most people here are within a mile radius that have a major concern. Um, I have a concern, but I do want to see Mr. Paladino succeed in his business. I think it's a good thing. However, there should be a compromise between the concerned neighbors and the business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Richard. Is there anybody else that did not sign up that wishes to speak, comment? Sure. Carl Van Oblock, it's Carl with a K. B-O-N-K-N-O-B-L-A-U-C-H, 7303. Hold on. <laughs> 7303 Hamilton Road. I oppose this project and uh, I'm not gonna repeat everything my neighbor said. But I do have a couple of concerns. Uh, the last zoning meeting, he said there's no complaints. I've tried to call Heritage Hill, but all you get is a recording. Uh, sorry, deputy, but I will be calling 911 from now on because I'm tired of it. I'm, on the weekends, I want to enjoy myself. I can't because I got to hear this mumble of my music. My other concern is he's been through this process before and he's added on and he's done all this other stuff without the planning board's approval. Is he going to do that again? That's my concern. And I think uh, what we should do as a community and the planning board is maybe test some of these wells now, the water, and see if there is any damage to the water, and especially the wells downstream. I don't think, I think I'd be all right because I'm uphill, but I'm going to have it tested anyway. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. My name is Jim Gozier, G-O-S-I-E-R. And I live at uh, Lisa Miles, and I live at 7262 Pratt's Falls Road. We adjoin the Paladino property to the north. Um, just following up on something that Mr. Corson said, that the, uh, the duty of the board, you know, is, is to regulate the development if the development is in compliance with the zoning designation, right? Let's not kid ourselves here. This is not a farm operation. This is a commercial meat packing operation. If you're packing boxes to be sent by FedEx across the state or across the country, this isn't a farm stand. It's not a farm operation. It's a commercial meat packing operation. Um, I was glad to hear that the board deferred its action on Seeker because there's just not been enough, any information on odors, noises. There's gonna be freezers and coolers running 24 hours a day. Nothing about that. There's no landscaping plan as is required by the site plan regulations. And I gotta tell you, I, I know a little bit about food processing facilities, 75 gallons of water a day for a meat processing facility, no way. They're gonna use more than that flushing the toilets for their 26 employees. These machines have to be cleaned Every day, they have to be sanitized every day. Sanitation chemicals, and then rinsed, and then tested. There is a lot more than 75 gallons of water being produced by this operation every day. And I think it's incumbent on this board to dive into that because that water is coming from somewhere. And yeah, maybe it's going into a holding tank and getting pumped out, but let's be realistic about the amount of water that's gonna be used in this operation. Um, and lastly, I'm glad to see that there's that the lighting plan such that it is called dark, dark sky compliant lighting. I would ask that this board to, to take that concept and spread it across the property. The light pole that's in the overflow parking lot, that shines directly into my bedroom and has 
for the last six years, every night, every night, if it were a dark sky compliant lighting fixtures on that pole, problem goes away. Very simple solution, very easy way to make the neighbors happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm Marlene Hayter, 3199 State Road, on the first house north of Palavita. I don't really have a problem with him, but ditto on what he just said. The light comes in, not in my bedroom, but in my kitchen every single night. And the other big concern I have is water. I mean, I'm right downstream from Paladino, from Heritage. I'm concerned that all this water is going to dry my well off. And that's all I need is no water. So I think that just has to get addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Marlene. Marlene. It was Marlene Hager. Arlene. Arlene. The name. No, oh, I'm H A G E R. H A Y. E R thirty one ninety nine. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm Smith. Okay, SMIT. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anybody else going once? Uh, yes, Alex Collin, thirty thirty nine Henneberry Road. We've dealt with the lights and the noise. Um, we can deal with it. It's a good thing that Dan is starting a business. Well, we did hear that he had a septic failure several years back. When you have a failure of a two, five, 10,000 gallon tank and it fails, people are going to be losing water. The problem is the parameters from the original job were never uphold. It's exactly what's going to happen again. And we're not putting our foot down whether the town can or can't. Somebody should be saying these are the parameters for the job. This is what gets done, not keep changing and then let everybody else deal with it. Thank you, Alex. Anybody else? Okay. I'm good. Uh, okay. From that, I guess we're going to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a general comment to everybody, please. There are forms out here in the lobby. And there's been people that, you yeah, know, second, so. pay, uh, pay attention, please, please. I, I hear people that, you know, in the good neighbors and, and working and calling Heritage Hill or Dan and, you know, hey, you know, this is bothering me or whatever. And um, some of that, there are complaint forms in the town here that if you need, fill those out and codes then has something to go by. Um, again, if the town directly doesn't have a complaint here, how do we know how the site plan is matching up? You know, the complaints don't come in here. We don't hear all that. Yeah, we might hear it out at a, at a mall or a simple backdoor conversation or something, but they need to be channeled so that people can be made aware of it here. We have, hold on, Joanne, we have two new codes, men, and they are trying the very best to do the best job they can. There has been um, a backlog of situations that they've been trying to work their way through and get caught up on. Um, so we'll be polite, but be concise in what the issue is, and that will help town okay um i want to add to that kind of um <clears throat> well the one thing it's great to see the amount of people here concerned about the town but 
most of the meetings here, it's the board and the applicant. And so when you really wanna be involved in your town and how it grows and how it changes, you need to come to many of the board meetings and many of the, not just the ones that affect you because you're a neighbor, but maybe the ones that affect your neighbors on the other side of town. So we welcome the comments both for and against any of the proposals that are before us. And um, uh, so please make it a habit to be part of your town and, and uh, you know, even become part of the board. You know, we're appointed on this board and we volunteer to do this, uh, to, you know, to, to be appointed. And uh, some of you may want to get involved in it, get impact on your town. And so don't just come when you're supporting or mad about something next to you, you know, come when it's something in town. Yes, sir. Are you still full-time at work, another job that you do full-time? Uh, I'm now retired, but uh, my first, I don't know how many years in the board, I, I uh, was full time. I'm I mean, also involved work full time jobs, and you have children too. <clears throat> this is a night that's precious that you're losing. Yeah. So to come in here every time, that's why we appoint people like you because you're supposed to be looking out for everybody else in the community. And we're we're doing our. Okay. I remind doing you though, it, it, it's now you can watch these watch meetings on Zoom. Zoom. There's videos of these meetings. You can at your own convenience. A lot of times, that's what I do on the other board meetings is get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, and watch the meeting that took place the night before. So they're on Facebook, they're on the town website. Okay. And I understand time. I um, I am uh, a member of this board. I've been on the board, I don't know how many years, Sue. I was on the environmental board before that. I had a full-time job up and just till, till a couple of years ago. I'm a volunteer fireman here locally. I put in time with that. Um, coached my kids in soccer. So yes, I understand the sacrifice of time. And it's something my parents did, and you know I try to do and return that to the community. I would add to that. I've been on this since 1995. When my son was my youngest, was two months old. I've raised three kids, went to as many games and so on as I could. I own a dairy farm. I drive school bus. I do train drivers, and this job right now is taking up a lot of time. Yeah, and. It's a labor of love for the town. It's a beautiful town and try to come together and make it the best place that we can. Again, planning board, we are handed our local laws, our codes, people come in with their application and it's our job to vet out the best that we can and does what is being presented match with what the codes, what the master plan is, what the local laws are what the zoning is. If there's something with zoning, it has to go to the zoning board for variance. It goes that way before we can act on it. And we're required every year to, to have training. And to tell you how I got on the board is someone wanted to do something in my neighborhood, on my street, and I got involved and I sat out there and I opposed it and spoke up about it and decided at that time that the best way for me to be involved in the community is to get on a board. So... You know, we're always looking for people. There you are. You had a question in the back. I just want to say thank you very much to all you people for volunteering. Looking at complaints from sides. Who reviews the complaints? That would go to code enforcement. No, that would go to code enforcement. You see that gentleman back there raising his hand? Code enforcement. Yeah, code enforcement. His name is Tim. He's very nice. Can you hear it online? Yeah, yeah. I do. People, I do want to thank everybody for their comments tonight. Um, Sarah has been typing wildly. I've been making notes. I think we've all taking our notes and to take these comments and, and go. You want to close the Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. <laughs> like I hear it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good.
There's still a meeting going on. Folks want to talk. Go outside. Um, outside, not just out there. Yeah, outside. Outside. If we still have a meeting going on. Gentlemen, order, please. Order, please. That we still have a meeting going on. If you wish to talk, please actually go outside. Outside, so we can continue in here. So, yeah. I I want to address the letters. Yes. The letters. So, yes, Sarah's got Sarah's got it under control. Excellent. Yeah. There we <laughs> Way to go, Betsy. Crowd control. Um. The board received a number of letters. Uh, some of them came in anonymous. Uh, I don't know if you have one of the letters I can see. Some of them came in anonymous and some came in signed. Um, I just need one of the actual letter. Um, and um, the ones that come in from concerned citizens or anonymous, we absolutely do nothing with. They just go in the trash um, because we have no idea whether they come from somebody outside the community or if you have a concern. And uh, it was a form letter that somebody printed up. I'll actually read it. It says, to the Poppy Planning Board, I am writing in regards to the proposed meat processing facility adjacent to Heritage Hill. I'm unable to attend the public comment meeting, but I would like to express my opposition to the project on the following grounds. This project would have a significant environmental impact to our community, including odorous air, groundwater quality, increased truck traffic on a hazardous section of Sweet Road, increased light pollution, increased ambient noise up to 24 hours a day. The project would negatively impact our quality of life, property values, which potentially reduces the town's tax revenue from home owners in the surrounding area. This project would adversely and irrevocably change the character of our community. Mr. Dan Palladino has claimed that this will be for agricultural use, but this is simply not true. This is an industrial scale facility with potential around the clock operation. It brings no value to the community and has no place in the town of Pompey. The responsibility of the town planning committee is to protect the integrity of our neighborhoods and to preserve the character of our beloved town by constraining inappropriate development that pre present substantial adverse consequences. I trust you will pause to consider this irreversible, the irreversible ramifications a project of this scope would have on the surrounding area as you take this matter into consideration and reject the proposed meat processing facility. And then there's a place for a signature. It's a form letter with, with some blanks. So, uh, I took issue with the last paragraph because I'm required every year to take four hours of training. I attend a symposium. On the county planning training board. Symposium. And I go through training with um, trainers from all over New York State that come into Onondaga County to train us, tell us what our job is. So um, having someone give me a lesson on what my responsibility is um, was not taken very well by me. We take our responsibility up here very seriously. In fact, I wanted to quit a couple of years ago, and my wife said, no, it's important the work you do, and you should continue to do that work, and, uh, and I will. So we do take this letter. It's a little difficult to have the same letter come in from, where did we get? Three, three, three. About three letters that, that came to us, but they're just a form letter with a signature. So it's to me, it's one person's position that just handed a letter to somebody else to sign. So I don't know which was the original and who brought it in, but we take it into consideration the, the letter that's here and um, the ones that were signed, of course, and had somebody's name. And I know not everybody can make it, uh, but I appreciate it. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know that we do take everything seriously, including those letters that came to us. And we just checked uh, the people watching on Zoom if there were any questions, and we didn't have any questions that showed up for people that couldn't make it. So um, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Yep. 
just if you want to give any instruction to the applicant, I know there were a number of notes um, and things that are needed, and, and most particularly the county. So that is is going to be critical to next steps. If, if there's some things you can fix that were talked about and bring them in. And then, of course, these comments will be considered, the seekers are going to be considered. Um, but it, it's, it's yeah, Dan, you were going to get letters from the DEC and Onondaga County as to where the position is right now on your septic. You're going to tell us who SWS is. Um, uh, well, more detailed on the there's a list. I mean, we'll, we have, we'll have to go through it, and we can yeah. put that together and email it to Dan. Yeah, 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 yes, it's just. As far as um, the seeker issues go, a couple of things came up tonight that I think would be helpful to, you su to supply the board. If you could give the um, ethical readings of the compressors that are outside, the noise generation issue. And then if you could also project uh, your, your, your total water use and the yield of the well that you're um, using to get that. That will help provide the board with some data, yeah. some real numbers for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got to fill out uh, for DDC the agricultural water use that report. Mm -hmm. Is that useful? Or... Be, yeah, we, we have a we have a meter, so we have a meter on our our water, so we know what our usage is mm -hmm. regularly. Um, the as far as the well, it is um, from our springs. Um, all the way down to 91 it's commercial well, but then it doesn't, it fills itself up. So it's not top of the hill water, it's just not pulling from there, it's from pulling from our springs, which you all know those are some pretty powerful springs down there. Um, Is that water got to be treated or going through? Yeah, I, I, so it goes through UV filtration. Um, that's that's the treatment that they prescribes it down. Plus we, so, we soften it. Then actually for anything we use inside, we ROX and for osmosis. But the only treatment is UV. We don't have to pour any of that. And some of the lights that I, I heard about were they existing lights yeah. on the property? No, you know I I I put we wanted lights when when we started to use that as overflow. We put those lights up. Um, I got a price quote on the other things. That's an easy fix. I did not, you know, okay. that pull. I'll get those three. I'll buy three of those lights and put that on right. that yeah, I think that's, that's, that's not a big deal. I'll, I'll replace all the lights around the property for that. Those are easy fixes. I have dialed, I, I will say I've dialed back a lot significantly. I've, I've committed to the, the festivals we have. Yes, that Bright Vibes Beer Music Festival, that's a legit concert. Um, it replaced my 4th of July thing and I'm singles and duos outside. And um, I will maintain to that 70 decibel neighbor reading. I'll fix these lights going in anybody's window. But I do want to, I do want to just add, and I'm, Sue probably knows them, but this Michael Latham, Department of Ag and Markets, okay, his email to me, he's the director right underneath Richard Ball. Uh, yes, indeed, the processing you're pursuing is much different than slaughter. It's covered under subsection 305A in Ag and Markets law, which means that as in, in an agricultural uh, jurisdiction, I can have that business. I can't have a slaughterhouse. Okay, there is no slaughter. I would be a fool to slaughter a cow with a with a brewery right next to it, and people coming from Manly and stuff to come to it. I mean, that's not so. But I can't even do it. It's not, that would require a zoning change. What I'm proposing is covered under ag and market slot. And one of the things this is, you know, I gave this for you, Jamie. I, I, this is um. This defines, and I just want to read it out loud, under ag and markets law, a farm operation includes the production, preparation, and marketing of crops and livestock. And the farm operation means the land on farm buildings, equipment, manure processing, and handling facilities, and practices which contribute to the production, preparation, and marketing of crops, livestock, and livestock products as a commercial enterprise. So do you have livestock on this? Yes, I have okay. livestock right now. Dan, can I get a copy of that up here? Yeah, I mean, that's this is the freaking, it's, it's, it's SS Ball email. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anything that you refer to in the yeah. letter, you should give us a copy. Yeah. So there's both of those and I'll send, I'll, I'll have, I'll have Michael do a letter. I mean, this, this is what the state wants, guys. This is what the state knows with the, with the and Sue knows this with, you care not gonna be able to farm in New York and, and make commodities and the little guy with the little farm and his broken down tractor that looks cute. And that's what people want to remember the second they exist and farmers have a right to, to make it too. And we'll, we'll address these issues and we'll do what's right. But this business is, is 
is self-contained and it's going to be a beautiful thing for the area for the people that embrace it. I will, I will address these, these things and I will meet the county's needs, but it is a farm operation. I know some people don't agree with that, but the state of New York does. So that's all I wanted to say. And you guys have been great. So it's just on the bad end. It's not similar comments, so I think if we can get a schematic of, you know, if I'm standing in front of whole sure. looking, what's it gonna look like? Um, we'll put I'll put some landscape about in it and a nice little colored picture and everything like that. So what the park um, thing's going to be. And the signs, you're going to get us a picture of what your signs sign. signs. Yeah. 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 You have one question that um, was thinking that I, I think Jeff, you spoke before that some of these products would be like a chicken sausage or something. Would there be poultry coming in then? Well, it would, or, again, it would already be. It, it already fairly, slaughtered, yeah. No, it would be fairly processed down to. Um, like the, we use, we just use straight boneless chicken breast for our chicken sausages. And you just buy that off market. Right? Yeah. yeah. Makes sense that you would have to have chicken come in if you're going to make chicken sauce. Bingo. <laughs> it should be where we're coming from as opposed to, it's, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I would say, again, yeah, I live on a dairy farm. Um, people, if you're concerned about 200 head of cattle. <laughs> He's got the acreage. It's it's got plenty of room for the kettle and the, the swine. Um, you know, if you were on five acres, yeah, I'd be concerned. But you've got the acres for it. And and I know that and I know that this you know the business impacts people. It impacts people just as positively as it impacts some people negatively. But this new business is the foundation of what Nunzio had this farm as, a cattle farm. And it is, it is, it, it, it hasn't changed except for the way that we have to do business. And in 1961, he opened a farm equipment dealership right there, which was technically a commercial business. And that's a stretch for agriculture, right? It's been the foundation of what our family has done up here for years. And I get, I'm a little bit more wild and a little bit, you know, like creative and stuff like that, but I'm trying to keep it to the spirit of what we've always done, what's going to make Pompey just look good. And I, I know I'm not going to please everybody. I just ask that you guys give us a chance to try to do it, right? So one, one other thing, we did take some after the public hearing comments, and someone did have a question, and you had a question. I did. Is there going to be a, a, a notification for the seeker? Is that going to be a public, public hearing as well? Uh, no, the public public. The public hearing is is closed, gone. but if you come to our next meeting, that's probably when we'll okay. see. The, okay. the, the, their, the agendas are published on the town site, so you'll oh, know that's what it's what on the agenda. Right. This one wasn't? No, it was not. No. Well, it was I, late. Oh, it was late. It was late, but it was no. today, this oh, afternoon. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Around three o'clock. We'll so try and get it in earlier. Sooner. Yeah, I, I didn't have it until. Sorry, I couldn't get to it. Dan, on, yeah. on, the, all the meetings, you won't miss it. on the description or on the uh, evaluation for the water usage that you're going to have your guide, can, can you put in that the description of where the what the water source is all about, what you were just saying about where it's located and the treatment it goes through? Just some kind of description of where I the water is coming from. Yeah. yeah. We send readings monthly to the water authority from the UV light, from a daily look at the UV lights, everything. There's a lot that goes into all this. And that's happening. Yeah, and I was, like I said, looking at the site plan, I just presumed everything came from that well that was on the site plan. You know, it's awful. So it ran out, just constantly just old, dissolved solids because it was so close to sweet. But yeah, none, none said it right. We got the water from the right spot. So. Spring flow now. Yeah, the wow. pipe runs all the way up from from down at Route 91, a half a mile, 200 foot rise up to so the top of the hill. Pumping up. You pump it all the way up. It you have the, the flow is not being pumped at this point. Oh no, that fills that well right up. Yeah, when we drilled it, Sue Andrews, she can witch a well. I can <laughs> promise you that. <laughs> so yeah, you have a well report then. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all yeah. I think they need. Okay. That'll, that'll give you the. Yeah. My name is Tim Chrysler. I live over at 2432 Ridge Road. Uh, just a quick question. Um, if uh, 
let's look at a pump model down the roof because I feel like it might be picking on a little bit. If he decided that his business would um, establish need to, let's just say, open 24 hours a day, would he have to bring that back to you folks? Or how does that if he, if he decided that the 81 project technically, happened, technically on a site plan, what's approved when the people leave here? They are instructed if there's any changes to that site plan that they're supposed to come back and have it approved. And some of the what are the bullet points of that site, that site plan? Like like uh, hours, occupancy, mm -hmm. uh, codes changes, uh, building construction, that that type of stuff. Lots of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. As I said, they're supposed to come back. Does it happen? <laughs> It does. It does. It does. It does. I'm just curious. I, I didn't know if, if either. And, and here's how here's how it works. When when we complete a site plan, uh, and then that group or whoever's doing that goes about their business, and our code enforcement officer checks on those things. Sure. Just like the sheriff finds out that I'm driving too fast, even though the road says I'm only supposed to go 55, I'm going 70, and the sheriff said. The site plan said go 55 and enforce that. So that's what code enforcement is, is enforcing the zoning and all the site plans that we put in place. If we tell Dan he's got to have a sign that's four by six and he puts a sign in that's four by eight, our code enforcement officer will stop by and say the sign's too big, cut it down. Yep, I understand all the beginning end of the thing. I'm talking after it's all established and life goes on and all of a sudden, Things, you know, improvements are had, simple improvements, just as changing the hours of operation. I didn't know if that's something that had to come back to me. Unless it's already within the code. Yeah, unless they, like, tonight they're asking for approval for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sure. They don't have to come back, even though they might not operate at that rate. I think you, Dan, you were open until midnight, but you only stay open until 10. Oh yeah, and yeah, no, yeah. you know, it's got an approval for midnight, but he stays off the bed. So one yeah. of those early nightclubs. <laughs> yes. Uh, Nancy Furdock, seventy two fifty five Civic. Yeah, the public hearing is over. We're just oh, okay. Informal, oh, just have a conversation. Yeah, right. Just okay. informal conversation. Um, so in the in that vein of the question about things being approved and then business owners or residents um, overreaching what's been approved. I heard a couple comments that there were approvals done on Dan's business for, for example, the tasting room, and then it kind of grew from there. Were, were all those improvements and growth approved successively? We, we actually, this evening, went through a list that Code Enforcement gave us about issues at Dan's site that we're addressing with him. So yes, we do address those. So there are things that were not approved in the site plan that originally in the site plan that he's gone ahead and done. Uh, the, brewery, the, the brewery approval was the exact building with the kitchen and with the same tasting dining room that I have now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I didn't go, yeah, I built the building exactly as it was. Right. Um, yeah, I, you know, you know, um, there's some things like the, the, the outdoor structures and stuff like that and some of those renovations, um, you know, those were, I got building permits for those because that was the process at the time. But now, you know, uh, Jamie said before anything like that to come in front of the planning board, but that wasn't the process at the time. So at the time I was following the process. There's a couple things and I've admitted to Sue that I could have and should have came back here for, but when you're operating a business and, and you're at the beginning of it, you're just trying to survive. And COVID was like absolute survival mode where you had to like do crazy things like a sunset drive-in and figure out how, how to pay some employees to keep them on. So yes, I... I mean, yeah, there's, no, there's no need right now to explain. Our, our public okay. hearing has been heard yeah. and we've heard it. And there are some questions. And many of these questions, code enforcement can answer for you. Actually, the, the, the most authority in our town, <laughs> the person with the most authority in this town is the code enforcement officer. <laughs> the code enforcement officer says you can do it, you can do it. If he says you can't do it, you can't do it, and it never comes in front of this board. 
I want I want Dan to understand, Dan. I'm not I'm not trying to challenge you. I'm I'm trying to get answers. I know there's people here that have questions, so I'm trying to help the flow of information with that line of questions. No, that's, that's fair. That's why I just explained it, Nancy. At the time, it, you know, I thought I was following the processes that we had, but we have clear processes, and we're going to we're approving everything that's there and and going forward. If there's any changes, we come back here. That's why Dan's here tonight. And it was here last month, and so we're working on it. So if people have questions about what's approved and what is, they can go to the code enforcement. Absolutely. To get the Absolutely. Yep. So if your neighbor is doing something that you think is wrong, um, that, that would be, you know, you can complain here at town. And if you fill the complaint out here at town, it goes to the code enforcement officer. For business. Right, right. He's not. He actually wears a badge and he has authority. To to take care of those zoning issues. Um, and if it gets real bad, they call her in. You have a badge, so I've seen your badge. I so. am I am going to add one thing, um, and maybe this is where you were going, but the home occupations are a big topic and topy top right now. And there is committee is working on that to come up with a local law on those. And we have a committee that's working on short term rentals like Airbnb stuff. So I'm on that committee. And there's a committee on home occupations. So there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that you probably don't know about, but it goes on all the time and fills more of my time. For, forgive my ignorance here, but what is home occupation? Uh, that's having a business in your home. Oh, okay. Yeah, we need to be on, Thank you. Be on the committees. Right. Right. We have people on the committees that are not, not members of the board. We have volunteers that, that are helping us with those issues. And, you know, it's it's a change. We, we um, spend all this time, uh, you know, on solar, uh, not solar, on wind energy. People wanted to put windmills up. And before we even had a law for windmills, now it's solar. So we had to write a solar law. So things change constantly and we try to keep up with it. And it's a lot of work as progress moves forward. You know, I tell people that 200 years ago when the salesman showed up with the windmills to pump your water out of your wells at your farm, people thought they were the item of the devil. <laughs> and they were against them. And now we think they're quaint when you see them. <laughs> Same with gas powered cars. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. There are no gas stations, no mechanics, no roads. Right, right. And I just bought an electric vehicle, and I'm getting a lot of grief for my electric vehicle. <laughs> okay. So then we'll get a list. Yeah. Of that. Okay. Yeah. So that, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second a motion. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Oh. <laughs>